This is a production of the Gold Arrow Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Gold Arrow Camp Podcast, a podcast for friends of Gold Arrow Camp. Throughout the year, we join you to bring your day some of what makes Gold Arrow special. Our goal is to help you have fun, make friends, and grow throughout the year, not just when you're at GAC. Since we can't get together in real life, we gather here around the virtual campfire. We have some of your favorite parts of morning assembly, like joke of the day. We also have interviews with experienced campers and some of your favorite counselors. We know it's a lot of fun and we're glad you joined us. Today it's episode 38, where we somehow convinced a 10-year GAC veteran to come on the pog and talk about her new puppy. It's Frames. <laughs> You know, here on the podcast, we love to talk about Gold Arrow Camp because we love Gold Arrow Camp. And we really love it when we get to talk to people who love camp as much as we do. And today we have one of those people. Frames is on the show and Frames talks about in her interview that she's loved camp since before she could even come to camp. And now that she's been on staff for a couple of years, she loves it for totally different reasons, which she also talked about. We also had a really good discussion about the advantages of working at camp over a traditional college internship. You know, if you know somebody who you think would be a great counselor, we would love to have them apply to work. Send them our way, goldarrowcamp.com. The application's right there. But while you're waiting for them to get their application in, here's something to listen to. It's frames. Oh, welcome to the podcast, Frames. What's up, Frames? Uh, not a lot. Just enjoying my non-summer. Right? It's it's hard to do. I, I find like the entire off season is either thinking back to last summer or thinking forward to next summer. I don't know if you're in that like. I, I'm i very much there. I, I pack. <laughs> I have a whole drawer of things that I'm ready to take out again when I pack for next summer right. and a whole bag of like things that are just ready to be pulled out I, for next summer. We have like tubs just marked camp clothes and I'm always like. Mm. Exactly. We could exactly. Just can get into those right now. I could, just, I could just put on the, <laughs> the American flag overalls just and go to work. It'd be cool, right? Nobody judge me. It'd, it'd be awesome. I wore my American flag onesie with my camp name on it, and everyone was like, hmm, okay. And you're like, like that, that seems odd. And you're like, no, no, that seems right. That's how it should be. <laughs> All right. So, like, a minute into our chat, let's, uh, let's, let's start at the beginning. So, for people who don't know you, which seems impossible at this point, can you tell us a little bit about like who you are and what you do for camp? Uh, well, my name is Frames, and this next coming summer will be my 11th summer. What? Um, I was a camper for eight years. I did what used to be the counselor in training program, is now the junior counselor program. And I have been a group counselor for the last two summers. So 11 years ago, like... How did, do you have any idea how your family decided that Gold Arrow was the camp you were going to go to? So actually my older brother, Dubs, uh, he went to camp the summer before I did. We we found out through some friends, uh, close friends of our family. And I was so jealous. And my mom lied to me and said, oh, they don't, they don't let seven year olds in. You have to wait till you're eight (laughs) years old. And I wasn't allowed to go. So, and I waited a whole year. I remember we went and picked him up and we did a tour and I was so jealous. I was so mad. I was like, <laughs> I want to go to camp. That's so so I waited a whole year, but I was eight and I was ready and it was, it was wonderful. When you think back to being eight, cause I think a lot of parents look at like their eight year olds and they think, well, oh, there's no way I could send my eight year old away for two weeks. That's insane. Like at eight, did you feel like you were ready to be away from home for two weeks? I, I think there's there's two kinds of kids on the on the first day of camp. There's the, the kids that are nervous and they're kind of holding on to their mom's leg, and then there's the kids like me who are like bye and sprint as fast as they can <laughs> on the bus. Uh, so yeah, I think I was ready. <laughs> yeah, I think if if the kids like runs onto the bus before you get them signed in, I think it's a good sign that they're ready. Yes, I I remember being so nervous that I was gonna have like a temperature or something, and right. they wouldn't let me on the bus, and I wasn't gonna be able to go to camp. Um, so as a group counselor, you get to kind of go to all the activities with kids and you get to just be with the cabin all the time. What's your favorite part about being a GC? Um, I think it's that I get to survey the activities and like the growth from a counselor perspective. Mm. And as a camper, you're not realizing you're 
you're doing, you're doing so much that you're too busy to think like, how is this affecting me long-term? How is, you know, overcoming my fear of the ropes course going to change my life? You don't think about it. You're like, Oh, I, I did it. I'm so proud. But as a counselor, I, I watch these kids who some, some of my girls, they come in on the first day and they're nervous and I see them, you know, do something amazing. And I, I get to be like, wow, I'm, I'm so proud of them. And I know this is going to mean so much to them one day. And that's kind of cool that you get to take a step back, but still be a part of it at the same time. Yeah, no, I think that's super cool that like as a GC, it's, yeah, it's like you said, you get to be there when they do something. And I, I think, I feel like seeing people do things and accomplish goals is really awesome. And I think GCs get to see just a ton of that because you know what all the goals are and you get to go to everything, right? Yeah. And I, I genuinely am happy for them. And like, yeah. it's not when we get to write letters home to the parents, I am, I'm like, I am so proud they did this. They wanted to, and they kicked butt. And it, it's such an amazing experience, especially from being a camper to being a counselor. Sure. Okay. So 11 years of experience, GC. So you've done probably every single activity. Although I had a conversation with bugs and I was like, you've surely done everything. She's like, no, I've never done high ropes. And I was like, wait, what? So all the activities you've done, basically everything. What's your favorite activity at camp? Uh, well, I think I have done everything. I, I don't think I managed to escape anything. <laughs> um, my favorite activity. Oh gosh, it's so hard. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of sailing, which is so sure. funny because a lot of people have fear of like uh, doing sailing on their own, but I, I always am really excited about it, which is very strange to my girls. They're like, we're so nervous. And I'm like, what do you mean? And I'm like out there, you know, <laughs> pretending like I'm a sailor, you know, like, Oh, forget them. I know how to do this really well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good lake for sailing, which makes sailing nice. I think. I really like it because it's so peaceful for like those, you know, that, that hour, hour and a half where you're actually on the lake. Yeah. You kind of just get to like sit there and like, just be like, wow, look, I'm driving a boat. <laughs> right. And it's, it's really kind of quiet because there's no motor, which is what always amazes me is you just, it's like right. the wind and, and the water yeah. and like laughter. And that's kind of it. And it's really wonderful. I think. They let me, they let me sail the American last summer and oh, oh my gosh, I was like, I feel like I was going so fast. I felt like I was in one of those movies. Like <laughs> the, the sea was going to like rise up over me. I was like, yeah, this is cool. <laughs> I'm awesome. I'm sailing. <laughs> <laughs> what is your all-time favorite camp memory that's so tough because I see things so differently as a camper sure. and as a counselor I think when I was a camper um one of my favorite memories was they used to have ultimate free time day and one of the options you could do was outdoor cooking slash jet skiing <laughs> and that I remember that <laughs> Yeah, that was no, the combination we came day. up with was outdoor <laughs> cooking and jet skiing. We would, we would jet ski slash skiff over to the Isle to jet ski Island. And then they would set up a fire and, you know, half the group would cook orange cake or whatever, banana boats. The other half's like jet skiing. And I just remember thinking that was really, really fun. Um, sad they don't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't uh, imagine why. <laughs> gosh, who knows? Um, as a, as a counselor, I think, some of my favorite memories have been with my co's um, and my, my friends that I've made through camp. Uh, Bugs talked about that trip to Mushroom Rock, which is, I actually drove her there and it was totally worth it. It was a great experience. That's awesome. Well, and so you talked about there and Bugs talked about it on her episode of the podcast. Uh, and you made a video that I think is floating around on YouTube somewhere. And it's kind of like you and a bunch of other counselors on a day off at Mushroom Rock, which is a formation near to camp. And there's like a sunset and a campfire. And I watched it and I was like, oh, that's like the best thing I've ever seen. Can you talk a little bit about what it's like to work with a bunch of college kids whose idea of a good time is to go to a big rock and watch the sunset <laughs> and sit around a campfire? And that's like your time off. Can, what's it like to work with people like that? Well, to sum it up in a nutshell, I'll let you know. One of the, the clips from that video is um, Sully, you know, tall as ever. Yeah. He is leading a game of mafia and <laughs> there are probably 30 some odd counselors just gladly yes. around that campfire playing mafia. Like there's no kids. <laughs> we were just so excited to like on, even on our time off, we're like let's play mafia. Like, and he's standing there like telling these <laughs> stories, you know, looking like a giant and he's, a, he's very like godly with the campfire coming up in front of oh him. And, uh, I think, I think that just proves that 
you know, there's a lot of stigma about college kids, but uh, when it comes down to it, we're just kids and we are so happy to work and live briefly in a place that is just so magical in so many ways. And going to, going to Mushroom Rock, that was right in the beginning of the summer. We, I really bonded with a lot of people and I actually made some friends there that I wouldn't have, I think, yeah. gone out of my way to meet if it hadn't been for that experience. And now I have such close friends that I, I would have never met if I hadn't kind of gone out of my way to kind of do that little bit wacky trip. <laughs> well, and I think personally it speaks to the kind of people that want to be camp counselors because there are a bunch of people who want to spend their summers either doing destructive things or they feel like oh, I got to get an internship and I got to get a job. And it's like, you've got the rest of your life to work in an office. And I, I think it takes, there's a certain recognition for the people that come to work at camp that says, no, listen, I've got a whole life to do that. I should do something meaningful now. And, and if they you, end up there. I think if you use the skills that you learn at camp correctly, you can get just as good a job as anyone oh, who absolutely. did an internship. Over. I think if you utilize the things you've learned in your people making skills and your friendship making skills, yeah. which is silly as it's you, that summer of internship is just as value as that summer at Gold Era. Well, I think if you look at like the skills that companies want, they aren't looking for technical skills, right? Anybody you hire out of school with a degree is going to have the technical skills I'm looking for, right? If I'm looking for a software engineer, in reality, they all are going to have the same basic set of skills. What I need is people who can work with each other and have like soft skills to deal with difficult situations and cubicle mates who are messy. And I think what you see if you read kind of what employers are saying is that increasingly the people who kind of follow that high achieving track and get internships and go to the best schools and have spent their whole life getting to that end point without enjoying the journey at all then don't have the soft skills and it's like you said like the counselor skills like i think skills that you learn living in a cabin with 10 10 year olds and two other 20 year olds like that makes your, like your cubicle mate is nothing compared to that. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, if you look at it, all the people that work at GAC, especially the ones who are college age, some of them are pre-med, some of them are yeah. engineers, some of them are business majors, some of them are future lawyers. I'm a visual arts major and none of us are at an internship. We're all yeah. out of our way to come and learn these like people skills. And it's, I think it's so much more useful than, you know, spending your summer in a cubicle on a computer. Yeah, it's I every time when I talk to people after we're done with the interview, I'm kind of like, so I don't have any idea what you do. Like, what do you do? Like, I had no idea that Astro was actually studying to become an astrophysicist. Isn't that funny? Like, his name is Astro. I was like, okay, that's fine. And then I was like, so what do you study anyway? He's like, oh, I'm an astrophysics major. I was like, hang on, you're, a, you're an astro what major? <laughs> like, that doesn't, I have a really hard time because I see all of you guys as counselors. Like, that's, like the box that my brain puts you in. And then the reality is, yeah, like I know former counselors who are almost done with law degrees or medical degrees or are working yeah. for like Amazon or other high powered companies. And I, all I can think of is I remember you in a unicorn onesie. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you, I've seen you do the penguin song 80 times. Right. I've, I've seen you. I know who you are. You can't hide it behind that suit and tie, friend. Oh, oh my word. Man. That's good. Um, no, yeah. I was going to say, it's great because you kind of get to cheer on your fellow counselors, too, yeah. in the outside world. I, I go from seeing them every day in the summer and then suddenly, you know, through social media, you know, one of them's got a job as a nurse or, you know, one of them's right. moving to another country. And it's kind of crazy because you, you also you, you learn as much as you can over the summer, but it's crazy. Then you're like, whoa, you know, so and so is living in China. Like that's crazy. Yeah. I'm always, I just, it's amazing to me, the people that we get, because I just, I'm blown away by how good you guys are as being camp counselors. And then how good you are at like regular life things. It's, it's, I told <laughs> somebody the, the other day that like <laughs> at, at 20, I couldn't get myself, myself out of bed in the morning to get to breakfast. And like, I watch counselors bring a bunch of 10 year olds up the hill, like singing songs and skipping to breakfast. And I'm like, yeah, they're, they are better at this than I ever would have been, <laughs> I think. Okay. So what are your thoughts on 
like things new campers can do to really fit in. Cause we're talking about like the culture is obviously a very unique thing that we have going on up at camp, like for new campers or even new staff members, what do you think they can do to really fit into that culture? Um, I think really just immerse yourself in the camp culture. Uh, we try really hard as staff to make a GAC culture that is so specific to yeah. us. And that really emphasizes, you know, having fun, making friends and growing. Um, but I think as a new camper and as a new staff member, even just accepting that, that this is how camp is. It's silly and it's weird and it's fun. And you're going to have the best two weeks, you know, eight weeks, nine weeks, however long you spend there. If you give yourself the opportunity to kind of let go, there's, there's no reason you need to impress anyone at camp. Everyone yeah. is impressed by how, how yourself you can be. And if you can really maintain like that kind of, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be weird for two weeks. Yeah. Then you'll have the best time. I, I think it, it can be hard when you go in and suddenly you're living with, you know, nine other people and you have all these new activities, but just kind of trusting the process of this is, this is what GAC is, I think makes it so much easier. I, I think that's really good advice. Like a lot of people say, Hey, listen, just, just do things. Don't be scared. And I think some of that's, there's certainly truth to that, but there's also just like, this is what this place is. It is the most honest place I've ever been in my life. Like there's no pretension there. Like what you see is absolutely what you get. And if, as soon as you can embrace that and say, okay, this is genuine, then that's when I think the fun really starts. In the 10 years I've been there, you know, things have changed. Things have moved around, moved around. Camp has gotten a little bigger, but I think the heart of camp has always stayed. You know, mm -hmm. I, I love, always loved the counselors that were kind of weird and, and made things silly. And I loved the way that, you know, there was an emphasis on trusting one another and making friends. That, oh, for sure. That's never going to change. And that's what's important. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Before we get to the speed round, I need you to share with people. You have a puppy, a fairly young puppy. <laughs> What is the dog <laughs> named, Frames? <laughs> the dog, uh, we got him in September. Lynx was there when we got the dog. Um, shout out to Lynx. And his name is Steph Furry. That is so good. And yes, yes, he has a little jersey. Um, Every fiber of my being he, yeah. loves that dad <laughs> joke. That is so good. It's... Well, when when we adopted him, he used to splash in his like water bowl, and they're called the Splash, Splash Brothers. Brothers and, of course. And Thompson, so. Yep, and <sighs> Dubs love sports, so <laughs> Steph, <laughs> it's not obvious by the name. Steph Furry, <laughs> that is so good. Yeah. All right, Frames. Five questions, the speed round. Five questions we ask absolutely everybody who comes on the podcast. Frames, what's your favorite camp song? I get loose. Y you get funky. What is your favorite item on the salad bar? Um, ooh, cherry tomatoes. Oh, outstanding choice. Favorite lip balm flavor? Salad bar ice. I mean, um, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> that is a joke that only one session worth of people and me is getting. And I loved every little bit of that. Cool. We'll keep it. Yeah. Salad bar ice. Uh, around the campfire, mallows or popcorn? Popcorn balls. And finally, frames. What's your real name? Specs. I mean, uh, oh, uh, you heard it right there, folks. Oh. She gave it away. Frames. His real right. name is Specs. Thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Of course. Thank you for having me. Joke of the cast. 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 Do you guys know why oysters don't like to give up their pearls? It's because they're shellfish. Get it? Shellfish. <laughs>